Hello, I'm Darren Alf from BicycleTouringPro.com. Normally when you see me, I'm telling you about the joys and benefits of bicycle touring. But there was one day this year that went really, really wrong, and uh, that does occasionally happen when you're traveling by bike. And I thought I would take a moment to tell you all about the day I got kicked off the train and had the police called on me, all in the same day. So, um, I was biking across Norway and Sweden. Um, this was during the summer of 2015. And um, I had been given a cabin to stay in for free for like two and a half whole weeks um, out on this island in western Norway. And I didn't want to pass up on this opportunity, so I sacrificed some of the cycling that I had planned to do so I could stay in this cabin. And uh, what that meant was that at the end of my time in Norway and Sweden, I had about a week to get from the island where I was living on the western coast of Norway all the way over to Umia, Sweden on the eastern side of Sweden. This is a distance of about a thousand kilometers or so. And there were ferry crossings and island hopping and all kinds of stuff. So it's not an easy thousand kilometers either. either. Um, so my plan was to cycle about a hundred kilometers a day um, for about a week and then at the end of that week of cycling to jump on a train in uh, Trondheim, Norway and take a series of trains, probably three trains, um, to Umia, Sweden, where I would then pack up my bike and fly home. So that was what I was doing and I had made it to Trondheim and I had actually made it past Trondheim to the small town of Hell, Norway, uh, which is kind of funny. And so I got on the train in Hell, Norway, and uh, from there I took the train to the Norway-Sweden border and got off in the city of Storlien, Sweden. So I'm in Sweden now, uh, Storlien, Sweden. It's a looks like a ski resort town. It's very cold right now. Um, it feels like it could snow any moment. I spent the night camped out in Storlien, um, waiting for the train the following morning that would then take me to the town of Sundval, I believe. i got to check my map here. Yeah, Sundsvall. Sundsvall, Sweden. And uh, I wasn't sure if this particular train uh, would allow my bicycle to go on board. There was a machine at the train station in Storlien uh, where I could buy my ticket, but there was no option uh, for buying a ticket for my bicycle. So I didn't want to pay for my ticket in advance. The ticket was like $100. I didn't want to pay that $100 and then have the conductor say, sorry, you can't get on the bike with your, with your can't get on the train with your bike. So um, I just waited to pay for my ticket until I got on board the train, which normally would be no problem. Like I've paid for train tickets in Norway and Sweden and not had an issue before. So, um, when the conductor came around, I said, you know, I'm going to uh, Sundsvall and then to Umia. And, um, and she said, okay, it'll be 750 whatevers. And, and so I gave her my credit card and the credit card didn't work. And I gave, her, I gave her another credit card, that card didn't work. For whatever reason, their little mobile credit card machine didn't work with my American credit cards. So um, I was like, oh no, how do I pay for my ticket? And she wanted to know the same, the conductor wanted to know the same thing. Um, luckily I did have like 500, I think, krona, Swedish krona, in my wallet, but the ticket was 750 krona. So I, at first I was going to just give her the 500 and then get off like two thirds of the way through my ride um, and, you know, have to go and find money at the ATM machine and then get back on the train. Um, but I'd have to wait like four hours for the next train to come if I did that. Um, so like then passengers on the train started offering to give me money. There was a girl, like a college student next to me, girl, and she was offering to give me the 200 krona just so I could stay on the train, which was really nice of her. Um, luckily, the conductor, uh, after talking to the driver and stuff, came back and said, you know what, don't worry about it. We'll take your 500 cash that you have, and we'll take you all the way to Soonsfall. So that was like the best thing that happened to me all day, was that they were nice to let me just go for free, basically, for part of the ride. When I got off in Sundsvall, though, I had 45 minutes until my next train came, um, the train to Umia, which was about 200 kilometers to the north. And uh, so I had 45 minutes, and I knew that I did not want to get on the second train now, knowing that my credit card wasn't going to work. So I needed to get some cash. And I had 45 minutes to find an ATM machine, get the cash, and come back to the train. 
Unfortunately, there was no ATM machine in the train station, which would make a lot of sense. Um, the, the nearest ATM was like a mile or like two kilometers or something, three kilometers into town. In, this is a town that I've never been to before, so I have no idea where I'm going to try to find this ATM machine. So I like dash across town, trying to find this place, race around this place. Finally, I find an ATM machine in the center of town. I go in and uh, my debit card won't work. The, the, my debit card has expired like six days prior. Oh my goodness. So then I try another debit card. That one's expired too. I have three debit cards. They've all expired at the same time, six days prior to this. Um, and I'm freaking out because I'm like, how am I going to, not only do I need to get on this train to Sweden, but the credit cards don't work, the debit cards don't work, and I have no money in my wallet to survive for the next like week before I fly back to America. Um, so I'm freaking out. Finally, then I think like, oh wait, I have like tons of money in my wallet. It's just not Swedish money. It's, I have American money and Romanian money and Denmark money and Norwegian money. So I'm like, if I can just find a currency exchange place, I can give them all the cash I have from these other currencies and hopefully get enough for my train ticket and food for the next week, basically. So that's what I do. I like run around town trying to find this, uh, you know, cash trading currency exchange place. Finally, I find this place. It took forever. I, like people were saying, it's over here. I go over there and they'd say, it's over here. And I'd run back. And meanwhile, the clock is ticking down. Now I have like 15 minutes before my train leaves, the last train of the night, basically, to Umia. Oh dear. So I go into the exchange place. I have to wait in line for like 10 seconds. And then I get up there and I'm like, I need money, but I don't have a credit card and I don't have a working debit card. Help. You know, and I give her the cash that I have and she says, oh, we can take this and this and this. And she gives me back some Swedish krona. And I take off. I got three minutes now until the train is going to leave and, and I'm like a kilometer away. So I'm like <laughs> dashing through this town. I have no idea. I've never been there before. I kind of know where the train station is. I, I see it. I, I ride straight through the train station over the tracks uh, and like literally ride into the train as the doors are closing and it's pulling out of the station. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm the king. I, I did it. You know what I mean? Can't believe I did it, but I did it. And so I sit down, I hang my bike up. They have a special place just for the bikes. I hang it up um, and sit down. And I'm like sweating. And the conductor comes around and he, you know, he says how much, I think it was 500 krona or something more to go to Umia. So I like give him the 500 krona cash that I have. He takes it and, and I'm like, ah, oh, I did it. You know, I'm going to be in Umia in an hour or whatever. About five minutes later, the conductor comes back and he says, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to kick you off the train. And I'm like, what? Like, I thought he was joking at first, but I, I was like, why? Like, wh why? And he was like, well, this particular train doesn't allow bicycles. And I was like, what do you mean? There's a bike hanger right there. My bike is hanging up in the, in the bike hanger. Uh, and he's like, yeah, I know, like, but this particular train isn't supposed to have bikes on it. Um, and the driver wants you out of the train. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, uh, I just couldn't believe it. And I was like, well, tell him I'm not getting off the train, you know? Uh, I tried to get, I tried to stay, and he's like, no, I'm sorry. Like, I don't have a problem with you being on the train. Like, the train was literally empty. There was four people on the train. I don't know what the problem was. So the train pulls into Harness and uh, Sweden, and I get kicked off the train, essentially. Uh, luckily, the conductor gave me my money back, so I basically got a free ride again up to Hardnesson. Um, but now I'm like 150 kilometers from Umia, and I know for a fact that I can't get back on the train. Um, I wait at the train station for like an hour, and the next two trains that come in, I kind of ask them if I can get on board, because uh, they were also going to Umia. Um, this was a train with a different company. They wouldn't let me on. Uh, another train came by from the same company. They wouldn't let me on, um, so I'm like, dang, I'm stuck here, or I gotta ride my bike all the way to Umia, 150 kilometers away. Um, and I could have easily done that, but I found a bus just on the other side of the station that was going not to Umia, but to this other town up north called, uh, what's the name of it? Oh, the names in Sweden are crazy. Orange, Orange. 
Godskvek or something like that. Anyway, so I get on this bus that's going to take me basically another 50 kilometers or so up the coast towards Umia. And I was hoping that this bus would get there before nightfall because I was thinking, well, if I get there, um, then I can, I can spend the night in this town and then the following day ride my bike to Umia, no problem. I, I get off the bus in Ornskvoldskvik or whatever it is called, and I'm the only person on the bus at this time. And so the bus driver kind of helps me get my, um, gets my bike out from underneath the bus. And then he says, like, where, where are you doing tonight? Where are you staying? And I was like, I don't know. Um, I was just going to camp in the woods or something. And he says, well, if you want to come in and use um, the, the bathroom, like the private um, bus driver bathroom, fill up your water bottles, you can. So I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. So he, like, lets me in through this private security door. I go into the bathroom, fill up my water bottles. I'm in there for, like, 30 seconds. I come back out, and the bus driver is gone. And now I'm locked inside the building, and I can't get out because I'm behind this, like, security door. And, and, I'm, and there's, like, a sign on there that says, like, you have to enter a code in order to get out of the, the door. But, like, the bus driver is gone. So I, like, sit there for, like, five minutes thinking, oh, maybe he just went to the bus. He's going to come back and get me. I sit there, no, like, the guy is just gone. So I try the door without entering the code, and as soon as I turn the door handle, the alarm goes off on the building, the whole bus station. You know, oh my gosh. So now I'm trapped inside the building with the alarm going off, and I'm thinking the police are on their way right now, like, to come and get me. And, and yeah, so I'm just standing there in the hallway like, ah. I'm screwed, <laughs> you know? And my bike is outside, by the way. So, like, anybody could just be stealing it because I had thought I would just be running into the bathroom for 30 seconds, fill up my water bottles, and then come back out. So, anyways, that's what's going on. Finally, the bus driver, he comes back in the door um, and says, did you try the door? And I was like, yeah, I tried the door because you left. And he was like, man, you shouldn't have tried the door. And I was like, yeah, well, I know that now, but why didn't you tell me you were going to leave me here? So, anyways, the bus driver is kind of like pissed off at me. Um, he lets me out of the building finally. The alarm is still going off and the police are on their way. Um, and basically, the bus driver turns his back and I grab my bike and I just dash out of there. I didn't even say like thanks or bye or anything. I was just like, sorry, buddy, I'm gone. So I like basically pedal off into the dark uh, black night um, as quickly as I possibly can. And, um, and then I'm trying to find a place to sleep. And it's dark and I can't see anything and, and it's a relatively sizable town so I'm having to cycle quite a ways before there's anything that I could even possibly camp in. Um, I try to go up through like, I, I'm looking at my map on my smartphone and trying to find a place to camp, you know, looking at parks and stuff on there but none of these places that I initially see are any good. Um, finally, I find a golf course, and um, near the golf course is like some forested area, and it's pitch black out there, like pitch black. And I just like uh, see the bushes in front of me of the forest, basically, and I go back into these bushes, no flashlight, nothing. I'm just walking into the forest, pitch black night, just feeling my way through these bushes. And I go back about ah, 50 feet or so from the, from the road, and, and I find a, a flat, bare spot in my coat, and I push my bike back there, and I just set up camp, and that was the end of the night. Um, it, but it was freaking scary uh, <laughs> being in that dark forest. So that was my um, basically longest, most stressful day of my whole 2015 bike tour. And the funny thing about it is I did no cycling that day. Like, like the, riding my bike is usually very easy compared to taking public transportation. Um, and this particular day just proved that. I mean, trouble on two different trains, trouble with the bus, trouble with getting locked in the police station, and then trouble finding a place to sleep at night. So all of that happened in one day, and it was just a mess. The following day, I rode um, 75 kilometers or so towards Umia, camped uh, out in the forest just outside of Umia that night, and then the following day cycled into Umia to complete my 2015 bike tour. So everything ended fine. Um, it was a, overall, the whole year obviously was a great experience, 
But that one particular day, wow, uh, that was not fun. <laughs> Hello there. It's September 10th, 2015. I'm in the forest just outside of Umia, Sweden. And today is the official last day of cycling that I have for my 2015 bike tour. I've been traveling nonstop for the last, like, 19 months all across Europe and Asia. Today is the last day 